Now let's start with triggers. Okay. So what are the different types of trigger we have? Uh, there are two types of triggers. Mm -hmm. uh, before trigger and after trigger. And uh, when to use one. So uh, before trigger is used when we want to perform uh, perform some actions on uh, same related uh, rec same same record or when to uh, we we want to validate the some uh, validation or some uh, throw validate validate or some uh, if we want to throw an error on uh, some actions or performed action which uh, before the save to the database and after trigger is uh, we after trigger is uh, used when we want to perform custom actions on uh, related objects when the ob record is saved to the database after the record is saved to database what is the difference between trigger dot old map and trigger dot new map uh, trigger dot old map uh, returns the old versions of record with the uh, id in uh, map format and trigger dot new map returns the uh, List a map of a new versions of record with, with with the ID in a map format. Suppose uh, uh, suppose one account and uh, account name was uh, ABCD mm -hmm. the corporations, and uh, we update the the account name to uh, ABCD uh, some one other suppose suppose one other name like uh, limited. And uh, then uh, in uh, in ABCD Limited uh, is the uh, available in uh, trigger dot new map and ABCD Corporation is available in trigger dot old map. Okay, so in uh, before trigger we do not have before and delete, but in after triggers we have uh, after and delete. So what is yes, the reason behind this? So we know, ma'am. Uh, before uh, we use the trigger before trigger uh, because uh, in before trigger we can't uh, do the DML operations and in after trigger we we can uh, DML operations because the in before trigger we do the operations before the record is saved to the database so there is no creation of ID and after trigger we we do the DML operations because there we perform the custom uh, to perform the custom actions after the record is saved to the database and after the so when uh, data record is saved to the database we it generate the id and uh, so in before delete if we delete uh, the record uh, before delete uh, it has some id so id will not change uh, id will uh, be unique so uh, if we we have before delete and uh, if, we um, we before undelete, then uh, there should be there should there is already ID, but uh, uh, so we can't give the ID uh, new ID. So there uh, is uh, no before undelete operation event. So in uh, after trigger, have you ever faced the exception like read only? Yes, ma'am. Okay, why do we get this type of exception? Because uh, when we perform the actions, in, when we perform actions in uh, after after trigger, the record is saved to the database, and uh, we can't uh, the update the record, so it will give it uh, gives the read only error when we want when we want to update the record. Okay, how we can resolve this? We can resolve this uh, by create uh, by creating the instance of uh, particular of that object, and uh, we need to provide the uh, ID of that record, and then we can provide the value. Okay. Which we want to update. What are the best practices to write a trigger? Uh, there are some best practices to write the trigger. The first one is. Uh, we always we need to 
create one trigger for one object mm-hmm. then uh, we need to uh, always use a trigger handler class for write logic don't uh, write uh, logic business logic in a trigger and uh, use the soql queries and dml operations outside the do uh, avoid to write write the soql queries inside loop uh, also uh, don't write the hard coding ids then uh, uh, use the uh, comments for make uh, your trigger uh, readable that's are the some uh, practices okay so the first point you uh, tell me like uh, we should always create one trigger per object okay so yes. why this comes under best practice or what is the reason to always create one trigger for one object mm, to maintain the order of execution mm-hmm. mm, the sales force are always always recommend us to uh, use one trigger for uh, one object because suppose uh, we created a uh, two triggers for one object for account and uh, and uh, before before insert suppose and in before to insert we give the we write logic says if this some uh, amount field is null then uh, show error and uh, in uh, other uh, other trigger if we put the validation as the uh, if the amount is less than 100 then uh, show the error and uh, in this condition if the first trigger which is if the amount is blank then show error and uh, if first uh, trigger is uh, triggered and then second is triggered then uh, we we uh, oh, there is no error found because in uh, second we if we give the more than 100 uh, value but in uh, if the second trigger is uh, triggered first and uh, first trigger is uh, then second then there is possibility to give the error okay okay what are null pointer exceptions null pointer exception uh, if uh, when we want to update uh, some uh, if we want to uh, update the list then uh, uh, if we are uh, but in that in that list uh, there is no any record then uh, there throw the error like uh, null pointer exception mm-hmm. okay whenever it will going to find the value as empty and it will going to throw the exception of null yeah. pointer either it is a variable or it is a list whatever okay okay no. what is the difference between blank and null is blank and is null right. is the a function in a valid validation rule we use is blank is used for or is blank is support to the number data types as well as test data type but uh, is null supports only text data type i think okay so this is not only uh, available in the validation rule so you can also use this in your apex also okay uh, yes, yes, your process uh, builder so in apex yeah, yeah. So in all the automations also you can use this. Okay, tell me what are what is the difference between asynchronous and synchronous? Asynchronous Apex runs in the back end. There is we no need to uh, wait wait for uh, completing the particular task. Uh, it uh, it runs in uh, its uh, separate thread. But in uh, synchronous we need to uh, in synchronous, the tasks are uh, performed in first one is uh, completed, then another one, then another one. So we can we need to wait for uh, completion, completing completion of task. So there, this this is the main difference. Okay. What are the different uh, methods we are having in this asynchronous apex? In asynchronous apex, there is one method, future method, mm-hmm. and uh, there are three apex classes. Mm-hmm. Uh, queable apex, uh, batch apex, and uh, scheduler apex. Okay, so what is batch apex, and when to use this batch apex? Then we need to perform the large number of records. Then uh, we need to 
use the batch apex okay in case of synchronous apex what uh, what are the number of records we can process at a time we can process up to 50000 records by using a, a synchron by using synchronous apex okay and if you want to process more records yeah. we want we will go with batch apex then we need uh, batch apex okay and what was the limit here up to 50 millions of record we can process by using batch apex asynchronously okay so what are the different methods we have in this and what are their purpose there are uh, three methods uh, in batch apex uh, start execute and finish and uh, we use the uh, interface in batch apex is database dot interface database dot batchable and uh, uh, start method query all the records mm -hmm. which uh, is on the record and uh, it uh, gives the uh, in records in batches to the execute method to uh, uh, operation or perform okay. and after uh, uh, all the batches are completed then the finish method is executed okay so here uh, in execute methods records are processed uh, in number of chunks right what is the default size for yes. this chunk uh, default size is 200 and uh, maximum size is 2000 and uh, minimum size is 1 okay minimum is 1 can we make callouts using batch apex yes ma'am we can call outs using batch apex by uh, using database database dot allow callouts okay so now yes. can we make the callouts using triggers uh, by using triggers uh, directly we can't uh, make the callout but uh, to call out call out uh, we need to uh, put the call out in future method and then we can call the future method uh, from trigger okay why we cannot make call out directly from triggers because uh, triggers are runs in uh, synchronously and uh, callouts are asynchronously. Okay, and, so uh, so we we don't uh, we not about sure about uh, or at hot time or in hot uh, after uh, which time uh, callouts are give uh, results or available then or triggers are not uh, waiting for. Uh, that uh, that reason yes. we can't uh, call out directly yeah so instead of waiting for the response from the call out we make it using the asynchronously so triggers do not have to wait for the response and it will yes, run yes. in different thread okay okay what is the difference between future methods and queryable apex um, in future method we can only use the uh, primitive data types as parameters uh, in the future method we can't give the parameter uh, as uh, non-primitive data types we can't pass the parameter but uh, in queuable we can pass the non-primitive uh, data types as a parameter and uh, in future method we have no no option to, to ch chaining of uh, jobs and uh, but in queuable apex we have we can do that and also uh, in queuable apex return the id of uh, id of job that uh, we can track the process or uh, track the our job job running process but uh, that is not future method is not uh, give, give the give the id of job these are the main difference okay so can we call a batch apex from future method No, we can't call batch apex uh, future method from batch apex. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. From batch apex no, we from can't. future methods. No, we can't uh, call the batch apex from future method. And can we call batch from batch apex? Yes, ma'am. We can call batch from batch apex. Uh, to call the batch from batch apex, we need to call the batch from uh, finish method only. Okay. 